Thank you so much. Hey, before you sit down, will you give the Lord a massive shout of praise? Amazing. Okay, high five two or three people around you that you did not come here with today, and you can be seated. Man, we are so pumped. The past few services, we've already seen 94 people commit their lives to Jesus. That's incredible. Pastor Jeremy, I love the warm introduction. Plus, we know he's been getting a break because he's very tan. Did you notice that? Panama, Pastor Panama Jack Jeremy. Like, he's amazing. He called me and said, man, would you come and be a part of what we're doing the week after Easter? And this is like home to me. I might be like a weird cousin, but it's home. How many of y'all have been in services with me before? Wave at me. Okay, cool. How many of you guys you have no clue who I am? Okay, some of you are like, I came for Pastor Jeremy. Well, you got white chocolate. So, all right. So we're going to have a great time. Let's pray, and then we're going to jump in this morning. Father, thank you for the opportunity to gather in your name. We, we, we don't treat these moments flippantly or with complacency. We never want to treat these moments casually because here's the reality. Matthew chapter 18, verse 19 and 20 says, if just two or three of us would show up and gather in your name, you would be in the midst of us. This is not karaoke Sunday. We didn't just sing songs to sing them. We came here for you. So show up, show off, and let us walk back out the same doors we came in, set free, healed, and delivered. If you believe it, say amen with me. Now listen, if you've been in any service with me, with me before, I preached a message, and this is a little heavy. I was pretty emotional during that last song. Would you give the worship team a hand as well for setting up the atmosphere? My wife and I, right before Thanksgiving of 17, we walked through a miscarriage, and right after that, she began to have complications, and we ended up rushing her to the hospital to do an emergency surgery to ultimately save her life. And right out of that, uh, Pastor Jeremy and I had been talking, and and Hope City is so near and dear to my heart because in the middle of all of that journey, you guys were with us and prayed with us and the team was with us and prayed through it. And, but my first message back was a message called Broken Pieces. It's actually archived with Hope City website. And Hope, it, the, the process of Broken Pieces was um, the Lord showed me during the middle of this tragedy that he can still uh, get us to our destination on Broken Pieces. And then the next part of it was that God can still pull purpose out of us where the enemy tried to stop us. And so this whole year, last year and a half, we've been just kind of navigating through it. This is the thing about God. His way is not only good, but it's actually better. He didn't cause the storm, but he shifted it to our favor. It's my beautiful family and our new baby of four weeks. So if anybody knows the story and the journey we went through, this baby is a miracle. So Breck and Finley over here, Daphne, you can see Daphne. She's like, are we keeping this baby? I thought I was the baby. So pray. My wife and my family are actually watching online. Would you give them a hand? I love you. All right, I have to do this because I believe if honor is in you, it comes out of you. You cannot fake honor. We're sitting in this room today. There's air conditioning. Thank God for air conditioning. Like, I landed on Friday, instantly popped the order and put it behind my knees. Like, it was like anywhere there's a crease, I was, all right. And so, but we're in this room. There's overflow happening, multiple campuses because two people said yes to the call of God in their lives a little over four years ago and said yes to the mission, the mantle of Hope City. Would you give your pastors, Pastors Jeremy and Jennifer Foster, a huge hand. I also want to echo Pastor G.I. Joe Kevin Lucas. Literally, Mattel called. They want to do a campus Pastor G.I. Joe collection, and he's going to be one of the first ones. Uh, but I want to echo what he just said. Almost 1,900 people gave their lives to the Lord last weekend. That is absolutely incredible. 1,900 people that will never know what the scent of hell smells like. 1,900 people that the shift happened in their family, that there's now someone standing with them that's stronger than the one that's been standing against them. And I'm pumped about that. Have you ever met anybody that's a travel agent for guilt trips? Like, you know that person? They're like, well, we would have had a good time if you would have showed up, but you have other friends. So I changed my Facebook status to my friendship with you is complicated. I'm like, that's weird. I don't even know if that's possible. The enemy, the devil, he's the king of guilt trips. He wants to try to keep you bound to your past. He wants to try to tell you that that title that you're wearing around your neck is damaged goods or that it's fragile. But here's the reality. The moment you give your life to the Lord, the moment you come into sonship or you become a daughter, that conversion, that transformation that takes place, your slate is wiped clean. And for 1,900 people last week, everything shifted. One more time, Hope City, will you just thank the Lord? <laughs> Old things became new. As we jump into the Word this morning, I want to encourage you to take notes. Harvard did a study, uh, Harvard Community College, they're outside Branson, it's not quite Harvard. <laughs> they did a study that said if you're a hearer only, you retain 5% of what you hear. So if you walked in and just you're sitting as a spectator, 5%. 
If you actually take down notes and, and write them down or put them in a device, a phone or whatever, retention rate goes up to 35%. If you actually take down notes, go back and watch the, po- the, the YouTube or the podcast, listen to the podcast and you look at your notes, retention rate grows as high as 90 to 95%. So take down notes if you can. If it's just references and go back and study, you can do that. But today, we're going to start with 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. I love the message translation of this. It says, but you are the chosen ones by God. Isn't it awesome to be chosen? Like, you ever played kickball or you were, like, at the gym and they're like, when he's breathing, I guess he can play with us. But, man, when you get picked, when you're chosen, and this verse says you're chosen by God, chosen for the high-calling priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do his work, and speak out for him. Paul's. You know the thing about Christianity is there are people that will read your life more than they'll ever read the Bible. Colossians 3:17 says, everything you do and everything you say, you do it as a representative of Jesus. Your coworkers and family members and neighbors, if they're surprised that you go to church, then you're probably not representing Jesus very well. They're like, you go to church? That's crazy. <laughs> really? Uh, okay. But it says right here that we are called to be God's instruments to speak out for him, to tell others the night and day difference he made for you. From nothing to something. From rejected to accepted. How many of y'all are grateful for that verse? I'm grateful. I'm a product of the local church. If anybody's been in a service, you know a little bit of my story. My dad was a drug dealer, drug addict. He struggled, man. He, He was abusive. He cheated all the time, was angry. He tried church and showed up one time and said, let's see if this God is real. Let's see if it's no more than the higher power, the big man upstairs. Showed up. Thank God for a pastor that didn't think that a service was a dress rehearsal. Thank God for a pastor that day that didn't just dismiss or throw it away because there wasn't that many people in the building. He preached a message on truth, grace, and love. My dad walked to the front. Heaven opened. Heaven touched earth. My dad got caught in between. My family was like Jerry Springer, y'all. Like, you are the father. Like, Mari Povich stuff. So I was born in an accident. My mom was going to abort me. The doctor said, you don't want to bring another baby in. My mom was hit by a drunk driver, almost killed us both while she was pregnant. We didn't have central heat in our house. We had a little wood-burning stove. She had two pairs of socks on, was walking down the steps, fl- slipped, held onto her stomach to protect me, broke her low back, almost miscarried me then. See, the enemy was gunning for me when I didn't have a voice. But now in my skinny jeans and my off-whites, y'all, I'm <laughs> kicking the devil in the teeth. We're doing some damage to the kingdom of darkness. And we're seeing some people set free. Amen. So typically the week after Easter, these questions are asked. What's next? What do I do next? What's the call on my life? How do I unlock my purpose and my gifts? And for starters at Hope City, we believe it's scriptural to be planted in the house of the Lord. We believe that deep roots produce healthy fruit. Psalms 92, 13 says this. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish in the courts of our God. John 15, 5 says, I'm the vine. You're the branches. We're the branches. He's the vine. If you remain in me and I in you, it says this, you will bear a little bit of fruit. It doesn't say that. It says you will bear much fruit, but apart from me, you can do nothing. Well, why are we talking about vines and branches? We believe the part of staying connected to the vine is directly connected to the power of the local church. If you've been looking for a good local church, if you've kind of been church hopping and church shopping, you don't have to look any further. Welcome home. Come on, say welcome home. Now, I'm going to say we at Hope City and stuff like that. Some of you are like, you're just a weird cousin that shows up every once in a while. I take ownership because I believe in what God is doing here. We're in covenant here, and I'm super excited. This is one of the things at Hope City that we're committed to helping people. Number one, know God. And these week-in and week-out services, we want to set up an atmosphere where people can grow, be refreshed and encouraged, and go back out and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Number two, we want people to grow in finding freedom. If you are a part of a connect group, wave at me. See, Hope City is large enough to serve, but it's small enough to know people. It's large enough to do damage to the kingdom of darkness and make a massive dent in this region, but it's small enough, and the connect groups do this. Proverbs 27, 17 says that iron sharpens iron as one man sharpens another. If you're not part of a connect group, it's such a life-giving way to grow and be discipled in God, so jump in. Number four is we want you to discover your purpose by joining and going through the growth track. And the last but not least, we want you to make a difference. Where's all my dream team people at? Wave at me. Wow. So if you're here and you're like, man, I just wonder if there's a place for my gifts. I wonder if there's a place for me to serve. The resounding answer is yes. Be a part, jump in. And if you want more information, you can text interest to 77453, or you can also check out the Next Steps area in the lobby to get connected. Okay, surrounding this, what I've been talking about, and then we're gonna jump into today's message. 
I also want to chat and, and give you guys something that's a, an amazing resource uh, today that's available for purchase in the lobby. It's Pastor Chris Hodges. How many of y'all love Pastor Chris? He's here a few weeks ago. Amazing. He's a legend. He has a brand new book out called What's Next? It's to challenge and strengthen us in our walk with Jesus to, number one, truly know him, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. We believe it's going to be a tremendous resource to your life. Look at the person next to you and say, get ready. Come on, just let them know. Say, get ready. Kicking off a brand new series today called Hey Siri. Say, hey. <laughs> hey Siri. Now, I, I notice instantly, and this has been pretty much trending in all the other services, body language changes. People start crossing their arms, and there's a handful, and we were living among them, uh, that are living in darkness still, that have Android phones. I know. I know. Some of you are like, I have no idea what's happening, right? Now, don't be spooked. They're sitting among you. <laughs> now, I can tell you're like, yeah, I don't know anything about Siri, and I don't know anything about Android. So y'all may say, hey, Randall, I don't know what you, what you do. And listen, I'm not trying to offend you. probably like cats, too. Uh, I'm not Literally, though, I'm not trying to offend you like decaf coffee. It's fine. It's no big deal. No, but seriously, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything I'm about to say, you can email me and write it down, chris at christhomlin.com <laughs> backslash hey Randall. Okay, moving on. So the foundation of this new series is this. What if we had access, the snap of a finger like we do to Siri, what if we had access to the Holy Spirit like that? What if we had access where we were able to Say, like with Siri yesterday, I said, hey, Siri, I need you to set alarm for 5.30 a.m. Some of you are like, 5.30? The Lord's not even awake at 5. He's definitely awake. Hey, Siri, what's the average temperature in July and August in Houston? She comes back, it's hotter than the sun, 185 degrees. I'm like, my God. Hey, Siri, what's the chances the Houston Rockets are going to dominate the Golden State Warriors, y'all, in the semi? So what if we had that type of access, that instant access, where it was like, hey, Holy Spirit, I, I need clarity about this relationship. Hey, Holy Spirit, I need wisdom about this financial situation. Holy Spirit, I need direction about this health problem. I need peace in this broken place in my life. And so we're going to dive a little bit deeper this morning because here's the truth. We do have that kind of access. That's great news. Look at the person next to you and say, get ready, all access. Come on, let them know. Now, maybe last weekend you were part of the new commitments to Jesus. Maybe you're kind of checking out church. Maybe somebody said they were going to buy you a steak if you came today. You didn't know it was a steak taco from Taco Bell, but you came. And so I don't have time to go into the depths of deep theological backing, but I do want to talk about the significance of who the Holy Spirit is. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 says that when we confess with our mouth and we believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ is Lord, it says you will be saved. The moment you receive Jesus, the moment the conversion and transformation begins to take place in your heart, you also receive access to the Holy Spirit. I love this verse found in the NIV out of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. It says, he set his seal of ownership on us. I mean, that's awesome. Like my kids know that they have a different posture and a position with me. Why? Because they belong to me. They belong to my wife. We belong to the king of the world. That he sets his seal of ownership on us and he put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. John chapter 3 verse 5 talks about being born again and refers to water and spirit. This is why we believe specifically at Hope City that after you've asked Jesus in your heart, the next step is to be water baptized. We believe this is a public expression and declaration of your faith that tells everyone that you belong to Jesus. That when you go under the water and you are brought back out, it's symbolizing from death to life. Next weekend, say next weekend, May 5th, and then the first weekend of every month at Hope City, they do water baptism. So if you've never been water baptized next weekend, you have an amazing opportunity. Jesus said this in John chapter 14, verse 26. He says, but the helper, another translation says the advocate, another translation says the comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, it says he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So this weekend, I want to show you a parallel between Siri and the Holy Spirit. Siri, at the snap of our fingers, we have instant access. The Holy Spirit, at the snap of our fingers, we can have instant access. I'm going to count to three, and I want you to snap with me. Come on. One, two, three. That sounds pretty cool. Do it one more time. One, two, three. See, I don't have the ability to do it with both hands. Like, this is like a mannequin hand. Like, I just can't. But at the snap of a finger, like, Siri, I can say, hey, Siri, I need to near a Starbucks, and boom, she's got the route ready. 
and I'm ready to go. What if we had that type of access? Let's talk about Siri first. The first thing we have to do to get the help of Siri is if you have an iDevice, an iPad, iPhone, whatever. Hey, Randall. <laughs> if, but you go into the settings and you have to go in and turn it on in order for it to be activated. Because maybe some of you love this series listening all the time. My wife turned it off. She's like, I don't need Siri in my life. She didn't tell me what to do. I run my own life. Now, maybe some of you, you turned it off because you don't want Big Brother listening. I know for me, I was talking to a friend the other day. He's like, bro, what kind of mattress do you have? So I put him on speaker, and I was looking up a couple things and sending him some links. I'm like, this is what I have, and this is what we have, and we love it. Within like 15 to 20 minutes, my Facebook and Instagram and Google ads and MySpace and LinkedIn and FarmersOnly.com. <laughs> These ads started popping up about mattresses. I was like, oh, okay. Has anybody experienced that before? You were looking up like cabins in Gatlinburg. You're like, how come everything's popping up right now? Because they're listening and we can't talk about it. Okay. But with Siri, if you don't want it on, you have to go in and turn it off. And if you want it on, you obviously go in and turn it on. You know, the other thing that's kind of funny, you can go in and change the accents out. And there's a couple of them, like the Australian one's like, oh, turn up there to the right side for Starbucks. And you're like, okay. The British one kind of feels like it's making fun of you a little bit. Like, I'm like, hey, Siri, where, where's the nearest mall? And she's like, oh, shopping again, are you? And she thinks you should probably hold off a little bit since you've gained some baby weight. I'm like, okay. You seem to be making fun of me. Okay. So when you want Siri's help, what do you do? You have to activate it. So here's the parallel with the Holy Spirit. In order to have the help of the Holy Spirit, the first step is to activate the Holy Spirit in your life. The way you activate the Holy Spirit in your lives is you have to surrender to the Lordship of Christ first. You know, to be a Christian is simply to be Christ-like, to be a disciple, to walk with the Lord in relationship. This wasn't a religious conversion. That's a waste of time. This was a step as a relationship with the Lord. Jesus, write this down if you're taking down notes, can't fix something that you refuse to surrender. Wow. He can't bless something that you refuse to release. And here's the truth. We're going to talk about sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about the nudges and the intuition and that gut feeling of the Holy Spirit in just a few moments. But the reality is unless you surrender, unless you really let go of these things, 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast your cares on the Lord because he cares for you. Unless you surrender these things, it muddies the waters of your ability to hear the Holy Spirit. Because here's the truth. The Holy Spirit is always speaking. Well, I've never heard him. Well, maybe there's too many distractions in your life. Maybe that toxic relationship is muddying the waters of your sensitivity. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Some of y'all are like, you don't know my life, okay? <laughs> Write this down if you're taking down notes. Number one, just like with Siri, we have to turn it on and activate it. Number one, we have to want the help of the Holy Spirit. Because here's the truth. God is not a forcer. He never has been. It would go against his divine order. It would go against free will. He will not force himself on your life. But if you make room, he'll fill every time. You need peace, make room, he'll fill. You need perseverance, make room, he'll fill. You need courage, make room, he'll fill. But number one, we have to want the help of the Holy Spirit. And you also have to be willing. This is where we don't like it. You have to be willing if he tells you that something needs changed in your life to change it. I don't like that. If something needs fixed before it gets more broken, you've got to listen. Maybe you've got to get out of that toxic situation or that relationship issue. The reality is we have to be willing for him to help us. But with like Siri, you have the ability because it's technology to turn it on and off. I think there's a misconception sometimes that the Holy Spirit takes a smoke break outside when you're in the club acting ratchet and messy. He's always with you. He's always there. And so the reality is his grace and the mercy of God is so sufficient that if you ever call on him, yeah, he'll rescue you and he'll pull you out of that low place. But the truth is the Holy Spirit is always Present, even in the very beginning when Adam and Eve tried to hide and God was like, where are you, Adam? Where are you, Eve? He knew where they were. They thought they were hiding. We can't hide. We can't hide. You can't turn off the Holy Spirit. And I'm not asking, we're not asking, we're not saying that we're, not perf that, that, that we're expecting perfection, but here's the reality, that I believe ultimately that the closer you get to God, the more the things that you've allowed access in your life before that's muddied the waters of the clarity and the sensitivity of the Lord, you'll start to deny those as you grow. There's a uh, bridge of a song, that's, uh, of, it's called Holy Spirit, and it says, Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Some of y'all are like, all right. <laughs> but listen to these words. Let us become 
more aware of your presence. That should be a declaration. That should be our anthem. God, never let me get so busy and consumed by this world that I don't hear you. The amazing thing about his grace, though, and I said this a moment ago, is he's always right there with you to rescue you. So moving on, to actually want the help of Siri, the next thing is you have to, you have to call her by name. I have to say, hey, Siri, in order for her to pop up and access what I need because she has the info to back it up. So number two, write this down. When you need the Holy Spirit, we need to call on the Holy Spirit. We have to call on the Holy Spirit. We need to call him by name. And I love this in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. It says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, I love this part right here, he hears us. Now, sometimes that might be a whisper. Sometimes that might be a desperate moment. Sometimes that might be standing in the backyard saying, God, I need you. Whatever your approach is, when we call on his name, y'all, he hears us. One of the things that blows my mind, and I was, I was in my hotel yesterday, and I was just sitting there, and I said, God, I, I'm still baffled and blown away that you want to hang out with me. Like, this isn't just a disconnected moment, but you actually want to spend time. He actually likes you. You know, like, those people say, I love you, man. I don't like that guy very much. <laughs> he actually loves you and likes you and wants to spend time with you and how we do this, how we get more sensitive to the presence of God, how we develop a sensitivity to hear the still small voice of God, the reverberation deep within our spirit, because it's not always an audible voice moment. Like some of us, our entire lives will never hear an audible voice, but it doesn't mean the Holy Spirit isn't nudging and directing you. And how we do this, how we grow in relationship with God is number one, we have to jump in and do what Matthew chapter six, verse 33 says. It says, but seek first, what's first mean? Some are like, I didn't know we were doing a quiz. I know this is a Methodist church. <laughs> no, it says seek first. Another translation says above all else. Another translation says as your priority, the kingdom of God and his righteousness in all these things. Say all these things. All these things will be added unto you. I've shared this story here before, but like nine out of ten times when Pastor Jeremy asked me to come, he said, you got to tell that story. And I was like, I've told it before. And he's like, we got more people. You just got to come. So if I've told you this, if I've said this story before and you've heard it, then just listen again. And, and if you've never heard it before, then awesome. But uh, I was asked to come to Sacramento to preach at this conference. And so I jumped on a plane and I landed and the pastor picked me up and he said, hey, man, I'm going to take you directly to the hotel. He goes, uh, I, sorry, I didn't think about it. Uh, so I'm an interim chaplain around with Sacramento Kings. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. He's like, yeah, that's pretty cool. He's like, uh, man, I don't, I don't know if you like like NBA games, but if you want to come, you can come tonight. And my, my response was, does a shark like snacks? Like, I want to go. But yeah, I want to go to the game. He's like, well, cool. I'll, I'll put a ticket in Will Call, and just if you can just Uber there and then just give him your name. I was like, man, this is amazing. So I show up. I show up to the stadium and jump out the Uber, and, and they were like, do you want me to pull you around? I said, no, I'm fine. Like, yeah, because I kind of felt VIP. Like, it feels good to be, be VIP. Like, wave at me if you're like, yeah, it feels pretty good. Like, no, seven of you? Okay, cool. <laughs> like, Friday when I flew here, I'm in the airport. I'm sitting around a bunch of common folks, because you'll understand why in a moment. It's normal people. And I'm just sitting there, and they were like, Daniel Groves, at least that's the way I heard it, come to gate seven. I said, all right. And I walked up, and she's like, you've been upgraded to first class. And I'm like, see ya, peasants. Like, don't talk to me anymore. <laughs> Stay behind the curtain. I'm drinking coffee out of a glass mug. Okay. <laughs> so I, I, I'm, I'm like, cool. So I'm at Will Call, and I said, hey, um, I said, Daniel Groves. And, and she's like, She's like, it's like index cards. Like, this is the NBA. I'm like, why do you have in index? Anyways, she's flipping through and she's like, mm -mm, I don't have a Daniel Groves. I said, well, look again. And she's like, I have a Deborah Groves. I'm like, that's not very VIP. Like, so I take it. I'm like, fine. And so I go in, you know, I go over and get concessions and I do what, you know, all tourists do. I bought the 96 ounce collector cup. Like, there's no reason to have that size cup. And if you drink that all the time, then we're doing an altar call later. Uh, so I, I got the cup, and then I got the nachos, you know, with the yellow number six and the formaldehyde and the super glue, and you wash it down with stale chips. You know what I'm talking about? $86 later. So I walk into the stadium, and there's a lady with a clipboard and a flashlight, and I'm like, well, she must work here. And I said, excuse me, ma'am. And she said, mm-hmm. So that's a good start. I said, uh, where, is, um, where is this seat? And I'm looking down by the floor. Where's this seat? And she said, mm-mm. And I said, hmm? And she said, mm-mm. I said, is it up here? And she said, no. And she takes her flashlight, and she starts clicking it and blinking. It, ding, ding, ding. And you could see the light disappearing in the darkness, which is not scriptural. It's not scriptural at all. She's blinking, and she said, it's way up there. And she starts talking to somebody else. And I'm like, whoa, 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 like how far? 
She said, way up there. And I said, how far? And she said, okay. When you feel that you have gone far enough, you have not, keep going. I'm like, all right, now you're just being mean. And so I'm up like 40 feet. I said, how far? And she said, all the way to the tippity top. And I said, okay. Now you're just hurting my feelings. So I got all the way up to the top, last seat, head against the concrete. I'm logged onto my phone watching the pregame. It's so far away. This is not very VIP for Daniel or Deborah. <laughs> like, so about 15, 20 minutes, nosebleed section, I'm bleeding in my nachos. I'm sitting up there, and I see blink, blink, blink. And I'm like, me? She's like, blink, 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 the flashlight. I'm like, me? She's like, blink, blink, blink. Me? And she's like, blink, blink. I was like, I don't know Morse code. Who fell? Somebody fell in a well. She's like, blink, blink. I was like, me? And she's like, come here. So I was like, okay. So I'm walking down like it's a journey. So I'm like holding the rail and trying to catch my breath. I get all the way down to her. And I said, yes, ma'am. And she said, you must know somebody. I said, mm-hmm. And she said, mm-hmm. And I said, hmm. And she said, mm-hmm. And I said, hmm. And she said, and I said, I could do this all day. We could sit here all day. Staring contest is next. She said, they want you down there. I said, hold my nachos. So I go all the way down. Now I'm in the nosebleeds 15 minutes ago. Now I'm touching the floor. Like I'm literally able to touch the floor. And the chaplain in front of mine comes out with security. And he says, hey, uh, man, I'm so sorry. I don't know how you ended up there. I said, yeah, Deborah's ticket. He goes, who? And I said, nothing. So I'm not even sure I'm allowed to be in the stadium right now. So he gives me this sticker, pops it on my chest. says, Capital Kings All Access. I said, wow. He said, uh, there's only a handful of people that have it. They've been security cleared. You can go anywhere you want. I said, where can I go? He said, you're asking too many questions. I was like, okay. He said, take me in the back. Now, mind you, I'm literally in the nosebleeds now at 20 minutes ago, and I'm in the back with owners and family members. There's an ice sculpture of a dolphin eating a fish, which is super weird. And I'm, I was like, cannibalism. I'm like, I don't know what's happening. And I'm standing there, and all of a sudden, the chaplain walks over and says, hey, I want you to meet the owner. And he takes me over to the owner. And he said, this is Daniel Groves. This guy's a great singer. And the owner goes, really? Sing me something. There's lots of people around. I was like, I don't know. What would I sing? And he's like, see me. So I said, never would have made it. Never should have made it. Sitting in the nosebleeds. <laughs> like, and he's like, bro, you should come back and sing the national anthem. You remind me of Danny Gokey. I'm like, that's the only white person you know. <laughs> Danny Gokey. He's a great guy, but I look nothing like Danny. And he's like, uh, have you ever sang the national anthem before? And I was like, I, like yes, but like, if you mess that up, you're done. Like, you'll never see me again. I'll move to the Netherlands. Like, you can't mess up the national anthem. He's like, fly your wife in, your family in. We'll bring you in. It'll be an amazing time. He's like, go get some food. And I'm literally like, how did I get here? Has anybody ever experienced a how did I get here moment? But see, as a Christian, when you're a representative of Jesus, verses like 252, Luke 252, where it says Jesus walked in favor with both God and man will actually be your anthem. Promotion and raises and increase and unexpected, unusual favor will come over your life. I'm sitting there, was in the nosebleeds, and now I'm eating shrimp the size of a lobster. I'm standing over there like, what on earth just happened? And I hear, don't eat all the shrimp. And I turn and it's shack. True story. And I said, oh, okay. There's plenty of shrimp for all of us, big guy. <laughs> Why are you telling us that story? We're talking about all access in the natural, but how much greater is the Spirit of God that when you spend time in His presence, the courage, the fight, the boldness, the joy, the peace, the strength you need is all found in His presence. What if we had access, instant access to the Holy Spirit, that wisdom, that clarity, everything you need when you need it? What if you could have that type of access? The past few weeks, we've needed some peace in some situations that we've been walking through, and my wife had a really tough pregnancy, but at the end, it was amazing, and, and we ended up, I just remember spending time with the Lord, because here's the other reality. The Holy Spirit, you gain access and sensitivity, and the Holy Spirit will speak to you through the Word of God. I was praying for peace one day, and what fills spills. So when you're squeezed in life, what comes out of you is what's hidden inside of you. So if you have the Word of God inside of you, in a moment that you need it, it might just bubble up. So I needed peace in the Lord. The Holy Spirit reminded me of Philippians 4, 7. It says this, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Hey, Holy Spirit, I need courage. I need wisdom. I need healing today. He took me to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways submit to him, and he will make your path straight. I asked Siri for directions to a Starbucks the other day, and I trusted that the route and the direction she took me as I followed that map 
avoided a, a wreck, avoided this situation, avoided traffic, and I trusted it. Why? Because she has the goods to back it up. So number three, when you're calling out the name of Jesus, we have to trust the leading and the direction of the Holy Spirit. So number one, you have to want the help of the Holy Spirit. Number two, you have to call on his name. Number two, number three, we have to trust the leading and the direction of the Holy Spirit. Because God's way is not only good, but it's better. Holy Spirit, what is the best approach to figuring out this situation in my life? But then you have to be okay with the route and the direction and the rerouting that he may take. Because we know that he has the goods ultimately to back it up. I said this a moment ago. that It doesn't have to be an audible voice that you hear. Some say it's a gut feeling. Some say it's an intuition, a nudge from the Holy Spirit. Wave at me if you've experienced this before. Awesome. And it might be a situation where I, I, I was telling this story last service. We were on a, on a 25 city tour and we were traveling all over the country. I was preaching to all these different churches. And that particular night, I was like, hey, I want to drive the bus. And the guy's like, do you have a bus license? I was like, I have a license. I don't know. Uh, so, anyways, I'm driving. My wife's up there and we, we're 70 feet long. My kids are in the bus and we're just cruising along. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful late afternoon going into the evening. And I felt, I can't describe it other than it reverberated in my spirit. I heard break. And I was like, what? And I heard it again, break. And I looked at my wife. I said, why? And she said, what? And I said, nothing. We're doing like 80, 85. If you're a police officer, we're doing 50, 55, 50, 50 55. <laughs> so we're driving, air brakes. That thing is 70 foot long. It's a lot of weight. It takes a little bit to slow up. So I just pumped the brake, 80, 75, 70, 65, 60. And no joke, 30, 40 feet in front of me, out of nowhere, not two or three, but six, seven deer ran out in front of us. Wow, what a crazy coincidence. Now I'm going to give God this one, that he nudged my spirit and said break. Because what would have happened if we would have hit those deer, my family, my wife, it could have been catastrophic. Somebody could have died. I also remember another situation that we were in. It was the night before we were going to the specialist, and they were about to tell us, the inevitable report of whatever we were about to encounter. And they had talked about multiple tumors. They had talked about cancer. They talked about a lot of years of walking through some stuff. And it was 43 days, 42 specific days up until this point of no sleep. Jackie would sleep. She was trusting God. But I'm telling you, the fear tried to grip me. And I said this earlier, the enemy knows that fear tolerated is faith contaminated. And he knows if he can muddy the waters of your confidence in God. And I was here, and she's going to pass. You're going to be a single dad. You're going to struggle. This is going to be. So I couldn't sleep. And I would sleep 30, 45 minutes and wake up and feel my heart racing. And for 42 days, it was hell on earth, I'll be honest. Doctor report after doctor report, inconclusive after inconclusive, tumors and this talk and surgeries. And I was like, oh, my, what are we dealing with here? And so I was downstairs doing the dishes like any good husband does. And all the husbands are like, you have a microphone and the responsibility to never say that publicly. But all the wives say, amen. All right. So I'm doing the dishes downstairs and I'm down there and I, I can't describe it. But I felt it deep within my spirit, just like I was saying with the bus a minute ago. I heard this in my spirit. Tonight you're going to rest. Go to sleep and sleep all night. Tomorrow you will see the work of my hand. And I remember sleeping literally all night for the first time in 42 nights. Waking up on the 43rd day, we drive to the doctor's appointment. We get there. My wife's checking in, and I heard the Lord say, today you're going to see the work of my hand. We go in the back. The doctor was from Italy, and he sounded like Count Chocula. So he was like, what? And I was like, oh, yes, I know. I've been eating a lot more gluten lately. It's probably, what? I don't know what you said. And he's talking, and I have no clue. I'm looking at my wife. She's like, it's okay. And then I heard him say, we need to run more tests. And she's like, we already ran those tests. And he said, no, no, we, we need to run more. And so we're like, okay, this has just been part of our journey. We end up going to the other room, and he walks over, and he says, and I said, I know, trust me. I am aware. I was like, I don't know what's <laughs> And he pats me on the chest. My wife's laying on this table, and he walks over and pats her on the head, which is a little weird. And I heard him say, I don't know what happened all the way up to today. As I look at your file, I would have said cancer. As I look at your file, tumors, and I see all of this. But what I'm telling you today is there's no cancer, no tumors. Your blood is clear. Your blood is clean. Wow, what a great coincidence. Now, I'm going to give God the glory for that one as well. Because in the midst of a storm, 
See, in, in our humanity, we think because something's delayed, it must be denied. But he's with you and he is fighting for you. Exodus 14, 14 says, the Lord will fight for you. You just need to be still and trust and know him. Would you stand to your feet as we bring this in for landing? Y'all still have time to beat the Baptist to Golden Corral. <laughs> like, there's cotton candy on the bar. It's amazing. It's like a carnival there. True story, I was in Tampa with my parents, and my mom's like, they're watching right now. I, I love you. I have to tell this. My mom's like, hey, let's go to Golden Corral. I was like, I haven't had pink eye in a while. <laughs> let's try it. So I show up, no joke, we're sitting there, and this kid walks over, and he's real mischievous, and he's looking like making eye contact with me. I was like, he walks over to the chocolate fountain, puts his entire arm in it, pulls it out, licks his hand, looks at me, just back in. People are watching this. He walks off, and they're like, well, still put pineapple in there. I'm like, okay. All right, moving on. We had a thing last summer that really uh, marked me. There's a song by Corey Asbury called Reckless Love. And for a season, there was about half of Americanized churches were doing it, and they're all about it. And there was another group of people that were like, I don't like describing my God as reckless. He's not reckless. He's unfailing, and he's amazing and faithful, and I agree with all of that. And honestly, I thought, man, Corey, maybe you could have used another word. But last summer at the pool, we were there with my 10-year-old Brecken, my 8-year-old Finley, and my 2-year-old Daphne. And we're at the pool, and uh, my wife's video and my little boy jumping in, and we're doing the slow motion effect, so he's like, mmm jumping in with my little girl. We're just having a blast. And there's a ton of people there. Music is going and people are laying out and hanging out. There's alligator floaties and a big piece of pizza floating, a bagel. It wasn't a float. It was a real bagel. Somebody just dropped in there. It was just floating. It was nasty. And people are just hanging out. And like I said to my wife, where's Daphne? And she said, I thought you had her. And I said, what? No, you have her. Like she didn't have her floaties on. I said, babe, where's Daphne? And we're like, Daph Daphne. And we're yelling and we're looking. And you, know, you kind of get, start panicking because there's tons of people. We couldn't find her. The only way I can describe this moment as a father, as I saw her at the very end of this Olympic junior size pool, the only thing I could think of was like, I gotta get from here to there. The only way I can describe that was it was reckless. Man, I took off running. I was using my old basketball moves, dodging people. I jumped over this guy, I'm just giving you context, he was laying out, he had a Speedo and way too much, some sort of lotion, it might have been butter, I don't know, but he was, <laughs> That dude was slick. <laughs> and I jumped over him like, too much. Like, and I'm running. I dodged this guy. But when I cut back, I banged into another kid and knocked her in the pool. She had floaties on. So she was like, ah, ha, ha. I was like, okay. <laughs> and then I tripped while I was trying to jump over this other lady. And my entire Chiquita banana hand ended up grabbing her whole, like, head. And I was like, I'm so sorry. And she was like, hey. And I jumped over her. And I kept running. And Daphne, at that moment, tripped and fell. And as she was falling in the water, I grabbed the back of her little sweat or her little swimsuit, and her chest touches the water, and I pulled her up. She looked back and said, Daddy got me. And I said, Daddy got you. Now, a lot of white people do timeouts, but I was like, Daddy got you. <laughs> so I'm walking back, my whole hand, I'm so sorry, my whole hand was on your face. My whole she's like, I understood, I saw it, and then I walked by and I said, but when you thought, man, maybe this wasn't enough, it was incredibly too much. You put just, you really slathered it on. There's kids around. You're a creeper. Let's just be honest. And then I walked back over and I sat down next to my wife and I said, I know what Corey Asbury was talking about with reckless. I can't describe what just happened other than I was reckless, but there was nothing I wasn't going to get through to get to her. How many are you... How many are grateful that his reckless love pulled you up out of a low place, rescued you in the midst of a mess, rescued you and set you free when others abandoned you and ran out on you and deserted you? He never left you, never forsake you. And I'm just thankful for a God that will light up a shadow for me and climb up a mountain for me and tear down a wall for me and rip down a life for me. And so will you lift your hands all over the room as a sign of surrender to God? Holy Spirit, this is my prayer, that that instant access we were talking about, can we have the same instant access like to Siri that, or Randall, <laughs> that we could with your spirit? And the answer is yes. And it's found in your presence. God, develop a sensitivity. Let us hear your voice. Wake us up in the middle of the night and pull on our hearts to spend time with you so that we can gain that all access, everything we need when we need it. 
There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. If you know this, sing with me again. There's no shadow you won't light up. Coming after me, yeah, yeah. Lie you Come on, can you sing it even bolder? Oh, no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up. There's no wall you won't kick down. And it leaves the 99 And I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it But still you Giving yourself away And oh, the overwhelming Never Come on, just the drums in the voice There's no shadow you won't light up say. There's no shadow you won't light up to me oh so why you won't tear down come on one more time there's no shadow stay no shadow you won't light up coming after me yeah yeah there's no one you won't lie you won't love of God. Father, today, the sound of my voice, if you're here this morning with your eyes closed, you say, Pastor Daniel, I don't know Jesus as my Savior, but I want to. We set this entire service up for this moment because we believe that found people find people. We've been found, so we're going to find some people that don't know Jesus. Like the close to 1900 last weekend, the 94 that have already given their lives to the Lord. If you're in this room, you say, Pastor Daniel, I want to know Jesus today. Something has been convincing me and I believe it was the Holy Spirit drawing me in to live for Him. Or maybe you say, Pastor Daniel, I've lived for Him before, but I, I've gotten caught up in the prodigal life, and I, I need to rededicate my life today. Whether you're the inv first invitation or the second invitation, today at Hope City, we are not going to pray a prayer for symbolic reasons, but in just a moment, everybody from the balcony to our team up on the stage, we're going to pray a prayer because of Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. It says, confess with your mouth, Believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. No more fragile, no more damaged goods, slate wiped clean, sins thrown as far from the east as the west. Would everybody in this room, in overflow and watching online right now, would you pray, all the extension campuses, would you pray right now with me? Say, Jesus, here I am. I surrender everything. I've been living for me. It's not working. I'm gonna live for you. From this moment on, I repent of every sin, all of my struggles, and all of my failures. I lay them at your feet. From this moment on, I'm going to live for you. From this moment on, I'm going to serve you. From this moment on, I choose to follow you. You're my Savior, you're my Father, and you're my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on.